Thanks, everybody. Uh, welcome to Build. I am your host, Ricky Kemler. Our next guest is the incredible lead in the new Broadway musical, Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of the Temptations. In it, Derek Baskin plays Otis Williams, the founder of the Temptations and the narrator of the show, making it not just an incredible performance, but a humongous feat of stamina by him. Let's take a look. Five guys, one dream, and a sound that would last a lifetime. This is their story. This is their musical. Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of the Temptations. Previews begin February 28th on Broadway. Visit telecharge.com today. Please welcome Derek Baskin. Let's hear it. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for being here. Man, I'm happy to be here. Uh, congratulations. Thank you, man. Unreal. An incredible show. I saw it last night. I felt like I, fi I felt while I was watching it, if you weren't grinning ear to ear in the audience, there was no blood pumping through your body. It is <laughs> such, a, a, such a wonderful show. It is filled with so much life. And I mean, so much of that has to, I mean, obviously your partner's in the show as well, but yeah. so much of that is you. He is on stage every scene. Man. Every scene is directed at him. Yeah. And then he's also narrating it to the audience yeah. as it happens. So I got to ask, you've been with the show since the beginning, right? I have, yeah, yeah. And what has it been like to watch it develop? And did it become more and more and more work for you <laughs> as it developed? Yeah, they kind of just kind of threw everything at me all at once. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's been big since the beginning. And, you know, it was, um, you know, when you first look at a piece, you know, you try to gauge the scope of it. And this was a really, really big piece, and it was a really big undertaking. And I, um, when I first looked at all of it, you know, it was like a little bit daunting. You know, I was like, this is a lot to do. I'm actually not sure if I can do it, because I've never done it. I've never been a lead before. I've never been in every scene of the show. I have a bunch of dialogue, a bunch of monologues, a bunch of singing, a bunch of dancing. I'm not really a good dancer. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I looked at all those pieces and it was a bit intimidating. But then, you know, if you take it one day at a time, you take one chapter at a time, you take one scene at a time, one song at a time, then it's manageable. And then you get to kind of more appreciate what you're doing. You appreciate what the story that you're telling. Uh, you appreciate the fact that you get to honor these icons. Yeah. You know, and so it was instead of looking at it as a huge big project, I began to look at it more like kind of a love letter to these men who, if they hadn't done what they've done, I wouldn't be here today. So what was yeah. it like learning all the dance moves and becoming a good dancer? Because I've seen yeah. the show, yeah. and you're a very good dancer in the show. Well, that took a lot of work. <laughs> and uh, our choreographer, his name is Sergio Trujillo, I had worked with him before on a, a musical called Memphis. Mm -hmm. uh, so he knew my, my dancing capabilities, and he worked uh, really well with me. He gave me the confidence. Like, I wouldn't have the confidence I have without him and Edgar Godino, who was his associate on the show. Uh, they really, really worked with me. I needed a, a a little bit more time than the other guys. Um, so they got me in a studio and, uh, you know, slowly but surely uh, learned the moves because I learn a little bit differently. I'm a, a bit of a scientist in my brain. You know, I'm a science geek. Yeah. And so it's a little bit different. You have from, a degree in biology, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I was pre-med in college. And so I, I, how I got here is, is bananas. <laughs> how did you but, get here? Let's let's start there. How did right. you get here? Well, uh, I was applying to medical schools and graduate schools and all that stuff. And I didn't want to have any regrets in life. I grew up singing. I grew up in church. Um, grew up singing and singing in school, singing in college, and I've always wanted to like make an album or like sing jingles and commercials. And I was in, um, I, I love Cut jingles. To the lead and ain't too proud. <laughs> I know, <laughs> no, right? <laughs> and so I was like, I was uh, graduated, went to school in, uh, in Virginia, Hampton University. Uh, I moved from Virginia to St. Louis. I was staying with my grandfather at the time, and I was like, well, you can't really do what you need to do here, so you know, let's just buy a ticket to New York and see what happens. So I bought a one-way ticket here. Uh, and, you know, I stayed at the YMCA for a couple of weeks and uh, was kind of just like knocking on doors and uh, had a little uh, cassette tape of me singing, oh, God, what did I sing? True Colors. Uh, I see your true colors shining oh, yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. And when I was, was like, this? Like, what year was this? Oh, God, I moved here 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And so I was just knocking on doors of the commercial agencies and it's like, hi, I want to sing jingles. <laughs> That's what I did. And did anyone hear your tape and say, 
you're going to sing more than jingles. I don't know if anyone actually listened to it. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you drop off these tapes and the receptionists are very kind. They're like, thanks. And you never know if they actually hear it or not. So I have no idea. So what? You know? when did you start getting into shows and when did you start performing? Yeah, well, uh, I started. Started one, My first job here was at TGI Fridays on 50th and 7th, a little bit further uptown from here. And um, this is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> this is an um, this is so amazing. Keep just tell the tell the story from it. beginning to end. I'll tell it to you. Uh, and so my new friends were aspiring actors, but I didn't know that. You know, a lot of waiters here are aspiring artists. And so um, they were auditioning for a show called Rent at the time. And it's like, well, you're a singer you used to come. And I was like, all right, sure. And so I went, I auditioned, I kept getting callbacks. I'm like, what am I actually being called back for? I had no clue. I had no clue. Did you go up to the waiters that you work with and they're like, calling me back? I don't want to yeah. do that. What is this for? Yeah. And the waiter's like, no, you got to go. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. They were like, you got a, you got a callback? I was like, yeah, I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah, I'm going to go back and see them and sing again. They were like. Wasting my time. They keep calling me back. Why? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So finally, I was like, I don't even know what I'm actually auditioning for. So let me actually go see what I'm auditioning for. So I won the lottery um, the particular night and saw the show and I was like, oh wow, it was my first Broadway show I'd ever seen. And I was like, I can do that. I was like, that I can do. And that was kind of like uh, a dream that I didn't know I had. You know what I mean? It's like you have dreams in your life and sometimes you have dreams, sometimes your dreams find you. And this one found me. Yeah. So you did you get into the show? Never got it. Oh, okay. You did not get the role. <laughs> Never got a job. Because that would be, yeah. you know, I mean, I can't imagine, like, every musical theater actor in the city would want to murder you. If it was uh, like, true. I showed up, I didn't know I wanted to do it, I went to a show, yeah, and they yeah. cast me. It was nah, great. No, nah, no. I, I, like, had callbacks for, like, years. And I'm not the only one. A few of my friends, we've talked about having callbacks for years for that particular show. And uh, But through that show, I was like, okay, since I can now do this, like, what do I actually need to do to actually you know, be on Broadway. And so I um, looked at the the back page of Backstage uh, newspaper. I looked up a uh, improv class. I took my first improv class where I met this girl uh, whose friend was a cater waiter, who I got another job. So I transferred from TGI Fridays, got a catering job at the Rainbow Room, Chirpiani's, where I met this other girl who had this National Dunkin' Donuts commercial. I was like, oh my God, I saw you on TV. I'm so close to being on commercials now because like my new friend is on, on a National Dunkin' Donuts commercial. I was like, how'd you get that? She was like, uh, oh, my, my agent. She's like, you want to meet her? I was like, yeah. So she introduces me to her agent and I completely made up a, a resume because I hadn't did, done anything. And I went to a passport place and took a passport picture. I blew up a passport picture. Is your headshot? Head yeah. <laughs> this is so good. This is so good. And so I, I, I auditioned for this uh, agent. And she was like, OK, this is obviously a lie, but you have something. <laughs> Uh, so oh, she, she caught like, out. She oh, caught on. Yeah, right. she she caught that I was a bunch of bull. She did. But she she respected like, it, which she is did. Not, yeah. She did. She did. And she actually, um, she got me my first two Broadway shows. She did. Yeah, yeah. That's how it happened. What was your What were your first two Broadway? Shows? Uh, my first Broadway show was uh, Spelling Bee, twenty fifth annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. That was my first one. No, no, she got my first and my third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got my second one on my own. That's incredible. Yeah. So now you're at this point where you're doing Ain't Too Proud, and it's yeah. your first leading role, yeah. right? Yeah. And what, how did how did this come about? How did you get the role of Otis Williams? Uh, I was actually working on a workshop of another musical that's on Broadway right now. Uh, and I was trying to get out of musicals because I had done a couple of episodes on this TV show called Difficult People. Mm -hmm. And I had just shot a movie called Marshall. So I was trying to get out of it. But my agent, uh, he was like, this role... Uh, is something that you've never done before. And I was like, man, I'm trying to get out of these musicals. I really just, you know, I just want to, you know, do TV and film. He's like, but this one is a bit special, and I really think that you should consider it. And so I read through some of the stuff, and I was like, oh, yeah, I should actually consider it. So um, I went in for the creative team, half of which I knew, half of which I didn't know, and I auditioned. Uh, I sang uh, Stand By Me from Smokey Joe's Cafe. Um, and the director, later I had a meeting with Des, uh, Des Mackinoff is our director, and he was like, there was a bit of melancholy in your song, and I knew that that was the tone I needed for someone 
who is remembering some of the things that they have gone through, which is what Otis does in this play. Because right, there's um, a lot of pain in the play. There's a know? lot of pain. As much yeah. as the show is so filled with life and love, yeah. all these memories are, they are memories. And yeah. memories themselves, whether they're good or bad, generally have some melancholy to them. Well, like, you know, in life, you know, in everyone's life, there's peaks and there's valleys, you know, and that's what this show is. It's a reflection of his life until present day. And so, you know, he's gone through some things and a lot of joys, but also, you know, a lot of pain. He's also the only surviving member of The Temptations. He so is. Even all of his good memories yeah. are, like, refracted by the idea that they're good memories with someone who is dead presently. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I kind of see this show as kind of, uh, our director said this really good I'm quoting him now. It's like, if your life is this prism, what our show is, it's like you shine a light through the prism and you see all the colors. And so we're kind of showing the different colors of, of his life. Yeah. yeah. What is the toughest part about the play for you? Uh, you is know, there still a tough part? Because I know you've been with it for, you know, almost a year now, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Uh, physically, the dancing. You know, it's just physically, yeah. it's very hard. But emotionally, you know, you have to take yourself there. So this man is talking about loves of his life, you know, these pillars, these brothers, um, his wife, his son, you know, these people who are very, very important to him. And to watch them come into his life and to watch them leave, I have to do that every night, you know. And that's, uh, it's, it's draining, but it's emotionally very taxing. Um, but I, I need to do it to kind of honor him. And so it's, uh, it's something like, you know, it's just worth it. It's worth it, but it's hard on your emotions to have someone that you love come into your life and to have them leave every night. It's hard. Do you feel like, <laughs> as much as you're singing every song with them, yeah. um, do you feel like, or is there a way that you save your voice until the end of the show? Because your final lead moment comes yeah. at that point. Yeah, well, you know, you kind of have to, like I'm doing right now, like as I'm talking to you, I uh, have to make sure that I'm, my, my vocals are placed in a way that is, takes the stress off of my cords, off of my throat. So, you know, you, uh, if you go to a voice lesson or whatever, they'll tell you to sing in your mask. And so when I speak, um, I try to speak in my mask in my, more in my sinuses than like in my cords. And it kind of saves, uh, it saves me tremendously. And I have to kind of speak at a, uh, I'm a uh, it's a little bit lower right now. Uh, but, you know, I kind of age in the show. So in the beginning of the show, the beginning monologue, I'm speaking very a uh, little bit lower. But then when I go back to being like a teenager in my 20s, I pitch him higher. Um, and so I kind of try to stay within a specific um, pitch range that I know is very safe. How, yeah. when, you, when you signed on to the show, how developed was it and how, what were the, how, how many other people had, had been cast yet? Because I could imagine rehearsals of this show being done with just you early on because so right. much of it is your monologues leading into scenes. Yeah. But a lot of it is, I, I would imagine the early stages is getting you comfortable and working you around the stage in telling these stories. Yeah, well we did a uh, table read, table read in January of 2017. Um, and then we did a workshop maybe about a month or six weeks after, and that was, a, that was one cast. And that, that particular cast has pretty much stayed the same. There's been a few different uh, temps uh, that have come in and out um, just to get the right chemistry. Um, but that work was done very quickly, very, very quickly, and thank God, because you know we were able to, over the last year, um, I would say, um, form a really good bond between the five classic temptations, but also just um, for the cast, because it's important that the entire cast has a good connection. I have to ask, did yeah. you ever have any uh, breakdowns over the amount of work, the daunting amount oh. of work that you were going to have? Did you have yeah. to have conversations where you're like, I don't know if I can do this? Absolutely. You know, you doubt yourself. Um, I doubted myself a few times, uh, uh, more than a few times, quite honestly. Because How did you just, come through that doubt? Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you, there's these voices in your head. You know, you have this angel and this devil uh, on your shoulders. And, um, you know, when you're doing something that you've never done before, that, that negative voice will, every insecurity that you have will, will just come to the surface. Um, but you have to say one day at a time, one word at a time, yeah. and, and know that you have been, I know that I'm here for a specific reason. If I'm here, that means I can do the job. And so I was like, okay, you can do it. You don't, I don't know how, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew it could be done. And so just one day at a time, I would just say, all right, just tackle this page. Just tackle this particular scene. 
and let's just figure that out. Okay, you got that scene, and let's just move to the next one. Right. Um, and so I did that scene by scene. Um, instead of looking at the big picture, you know what I mean? Because I didn't actually know what the picture was, you know? So if I just got every scene right, eventually the picture would come into focus. And so that's what I did, and, and uh, it kind of took the nerves away. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Otis Williams, who you play, is yeah. the sort of founding member and yeah. so only surviving member of the original Temptations. Yeah. Has he seen the show? Have you talked to him? Did you talk to him before the show started going up? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, when we started rehearsals, I hadn't spoken with him. Um, I was kind of too nervous to do that. You know, he's an icon. These men are icons, you know. But when I met him, I was like, man, this guy's just so down to earth. He uh, lives in, like, perpetual gratitude from being where he is. <laughs> Um, Which and you kind of portray as well. I, 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 I would hope to do it because that's when I met him, that's what I get from him. You know, he grew up in a time where to get out of the neighborhood he was in, you know, it's music or it's sports, mm -hmm. you know, and he was lucky enough to get out of, you know, the situation that he grew up in. And he's very grateful for that. He doesn't take it for granted. Even today, he still doesn't take it for granted um, where he is. He realizes that it's, you know, it's a blessing and it's not the norm to achieve the kind of success that he's achieved. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it was just, at first it was daunting, you know, meeting him, but then after you meet him, you fall in love with the guy and he uh, has this wealth of knowledge that you just can't get from, you know, I read his autobiography, um, I talked to the book writer, so, you know, you have to do your research, but talking to him one-on-one -on -one is just a, such a wealth of knowledge. He's so warm, we call him Uncle O. He, um, he calls us, he texts us, you know, just to make sure that we're okay. He, me and him have a very good relationship, very close relationship. He feels very uh, protective of me. Um, and I think he's protective of the cast because he realizes that we are really trying to honor him and trying to honor his story. <coughs> Excuse me. How much can you, in a play like this, where there's so many songs and there's so many choreographed moments yeah. and there's these monologues that are telling very specific stories. Yeah. How much do you as an actor feel like you actually can portray or the play itself kind of portrays a lot of those things? Like it's yeah. much different in TV or film, right? Sure. Where you have to show up and be like, this is my character's motivation. Yeah. How do I present this? Mm -hmm. Whereas in, this, in a play like this where there's so many songs, so many movements, the play does a lot of that as well. Yeah, well, you know, luckily our book writer, she's just a genius. Her name is Dominique Morisot, and um, she's from Detroit. So this is kind of a love letter to her city. Uh, she grew up listening to The Temptations with her family. And, um, you know, she's done the lion's share of the work. She's just a really, really good writer, and it's written in such a way that... I don't really have to act, you know what I mean? If I say the words, the story is just so vivid in the way she describes it, and I feel like her writing matches the music, yeah. you know? The music, um, it's just, if you listen to the lyrics, they're, they're just, uh, a lot of the lyrics are what those guys were going through, you know, about heartbreak and heartache and also falling in love and, um, you know, get ready, here I come, that's also very exciting. So it's like they're, the music is reflecting their times and then she has reflected their times. And they're both, they have converged so brilliantly that you can honestly, I could just say the words and it, you would feel, you would feel what you feel, you know. But luckily, I'm an actor. Yes, <laughs> I'm an actor, and um, I, I... You do an incredible job oh, as an thanks, actor. I didn't man, mean I to take it. away from no, that No, not at all, way. not at all. But, I mean, I'm saying the story is that good. Yeah. That if you were to, like, if you have the book or the script of it and, and you weren't seeing it on, on a stage, you would still be moved, you would still be riveted. So, because yeah. so much of the show is telling the story as yeah. well as showing it, right. but it's a lot of telling the oh, story. Oh, absolutely. Very, which is much, much different than when you get on a set and you have to show yeah. what a story but is. But it's also different from, like you know, a jukebox musical. Like this, I would say, is actually not a jukebox musical. This is a biography, you know? Because a lot of times in jukebox musicals, you have the music of this artist and then you make up a story. But this is their actual story with their actual music. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's really cool to do every now. I also feel like in jukebox music musicals, the the musical numbers are not seamlessly woven through yeah, 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 the yeah. play. It's very... Um, cut and dry. It's like yeah. here's some here's but some exp exposition here's and story. Here's yeah. the song. With this, it's 
unreal how you guys are able to weave minor moments from songs into yeah. into a into a scene and then big huge musical numbers it's hard to tell when something is going to be a big musical number and when yeah. is something just is just going to be a small musical moment because yeah. they're all kind of blended into the show well i think that's um you know such a credit to the writing and the directing of the show because they didn't want it to feel like a musical yeah. you know you they wanted it to feel like a memory play and so, you know, when you think about your memories, it, things come in and they flow out, you know, it's just very... Like cool. a medley, yeah, in a way, like a memory medley. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what it is now. This is a memory medley. Yeah. Change the name, memory medley, <laughs> the life and times of the temptation. Done and done. I'll yeah. get on that. Um, you know, there, you have an incredible uh, solo at the end of the show that is yeah. un unbelievable. A number of the other uh, performers have solos. There's really only one other performer, I think, in the show who has a single solo, and I think, and that is the woman that plays your wife, yeah. who has a moment that destroys the house. She, her name is Rashidra, uh, and Rashidra is, uh, she plays Josephine, who is my wife in the show, and we share a son in the show. Yeah. Uh, and her vocals are, I just wait for it, because I know what's coming every night, and so I'm looking at her, and the we're- The audience goes, <gasps> Like, just at her voice, because it's so powerful. Yeah, and it's kind of like a welcome uh, change to what you've been hearing, you know, because yeah. you've been hearing all these male voices, and then she comes in, and she just destroys it. And she's consistent every night. She brings that house down. And it's, I just watch it. I wait for it to happen. And we're, we're, we're talking to each other, and it's just a very tender moment. And it's like, it's a moment where, you know, be, between me and her, it's kind of a breakup is happening, and I don't want her to leave my life. And so, you know, I'm trying to be, you know, on one side, the, the actor is like, you know, I'm sad I don't want you to leave. But Derek, the inside is like, you about to let them have it real quick. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, you are really about to let them have it. And she does, man. It's, and she, like, you know, she screams my face off every night, and I love it. Yeah, it's a moment where you yeah. like I, you put your hand. You go, "Oh my god, I can't oh, believe that man. just had that that exists in yeah. reality." I, I, yeah, I, I wish she could sing more. Honestly, I yeah. wish they gave her more. But you know, it's about the temp. So, what is it like for you going into a show where your solo moment is the final? I don't, I don't think this is too much of a spoiler for people who are going to no. go see it. It's not going to yeah. But the final moment of the show is your first solo. Yeah, it's when you step up and you're kind of like. Once you recognize, once I recognized about 30 minutes into the show that you weren't going to be singing until yeah. the end because it, the sh it had been laid out this way, right. I was thinking, oh my God, what pressure to be like, yeah. the whole show hinges upon my moment at the yeah. end. Yeah, well, I kind of, instead of uh, looking at it as pressure, it's kind of like, because if I do that, I'll, I'll freak out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I kind of... Um, you know, it's like a culmination of everything. It's kind of a, a release for me mm -hmm. um, because at this point, you followed Otis's life for 50 years. You know what I mean? And so this is the end of that particular journey. You know what I mean? And so it's kind of a release. It's kind of a thank you to the audience for, for coming along with me for the, for the journey. And uh, for me, I'm like, oh, I get to sing now. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, yeah. You're excited to finally be able to sing. I am. Yeah, I am. It's just such good music. And I'm like, just put me in, coach. It's like one of those things. And uh, so once I get to the end of the show, it's, it's, it's a release for me. Yeah. You know, you and um, everybody that you and all the other actors that are playing Temptations are just incredible together. And I'm wondering if at any point in the last year of doing this, the personalities of the actual, of the of who they're playing have melded into you guys backstage as well? Well, you know, I just, to the credit of the casting team, I think we already were, which is very, very interesting. Like uh, me and Otis, like our temperaments are quite the same. Um, what we stand for, what we believe in, but just our everyday kind of temperaments, we're the same. Um, and the it kind of goes, the same for the others, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, well, yeah. To a degree. Would, to a degree. Not, yeah, yeah, I would say, like, uh, my little brother, his name is Ephraim Sykes. He, Ephraim Sykes, he plays David Ruffin. Like, he, he doesn't go, you know, to the nth degree that the David Ruffin would, character would play, but, you know, he's, he's a showman, do you know what I mean? 100%. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, uh, the guy who plays my best friend, Juwan Jackson, uh, he really is that guy, you know, he's just a very kind, very warm guy. Um, Paul Williams, James Harkness, he plays uh, the guy who uh, was, kind of serves as our choreographer. You know, he grew up dancing, you know what I mean? He's also the heart and soul of the group, and, 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 and James wears his heart on his sleeves, you know? And then Jeremy Pope, he is just one of the most smart, 
He's a very, very smart actor, like Eddie, and he was, he's very calculated, mm -hmm. but calculated in a good way. You know what I mean? And and he what he stands for, you know, he 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 actually Jeremy Pope, he checks on me quite often. And um he in the show, he's he and um Paul Williams are friends and they're loyal. And so he has that relationship with him. And so Jeremy has that relationship with me. And so like all the five of us checks on you how? Uh, you know, just to make sure I'm, you know, I'm doing all right. You know, if my spirits are all right, if I need anything. Yesterday, oh, he brought wow. me some food, and I was like, thanks, man. You know, wow. he really checks in on me just to make sure that my spirits are up. And because it's a lot, you know, but yeah. it's a lot for all of us. Um, but he knows that what I'm doing, it, it's a lot. And so he, he, um, yeah, he checks in on me, and I really appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. And you all have so much work to do, and you as well. But uh, the, the actor, you said his name is Ephraim, right? Who Ephraim plays Sykes. Yeah. Ephraim Sykes. Yeah. You know, I feel like because of how he's sort of the first one gone at one point, yeah. that you sort of forget by the end of the show just how much he put into, yeah, like the first act and the first half of the second act, right? Right. You know, right. like because yeah. now that you bring it up, I was thinking, I was like, you called him a showman. It's like, yeah, yeah he yeah. is doing the splits like 15 times throughout the show, jumping it's up and a, down. It's a bit ridiculous. <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous. But, you know, we, I met him. He's my little brother. I met him 10 years ago. Um, yeah, 10 years ago on oh. his first Broadway show, uh, The Little Mermaid. Disney's The Little Mermaid. And uh, to see him grow... Uh, into the performer that he is today, it's just been fantastic. And then he gets to play like one of the greatest front men that have has ever done it. Like David Ruffin, there's just nothing, you know. Every front man that's happening today is is nothing to be compared to what he has done. So watching him do that every night, like my body hurts watching him do it. Yeah. I'm very glad I don't have to do it, <laughs> um, but I do enjoy watching him doing it. He does a very, very well job. Very good job. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we have time for one question. Who has a question? Right here. Good morning, Derek. Hey, good morning, man. Congratulations on the show. Thank you, thank you. Uh, did you grow up listening to a lot of The Temptations, a lot of Motown? Yeah. And did you know a lot of these songs before you started the show? Well, I grew up listening to some Motown. My uh, biggest inspiration is Stevie Wonder, who is also in Motown. But what uh, uh, my fondest memory of Temptations is every Christmas that Temptations Christmas album comes on, it's the first one. You know what I mean? And we listen to it, and I, that's my childhood memory. And when I uh, booked this show, my parents were like, oh my, they were like just through the roof about it because this is the music of their youth. You know what I mean? And so they told me the story before I read the script. You know, they were like, okay, so uh, David did this, Eddie did this, <laughs> Melvin did this, and uh, it was uh, just heartwarming to see my parents light up. This, they've never been uh, this excited about a piece ever. Uh, but yeah, yeah, growing up, that Christmas album, you know, every every Christmas, it, it's a staple in our house, in the Baskin household. <laughs> I'm I, I I'm sorry if you grew up in a household where you didn't listen to the Temptations. Yeah. I feel like like I'm, how could you not? Right? Yeah, I'm like a white kid from Massachusetts, <laughs> and we were listening to the Temptations all the time. Like, who didn't listen to My Girl? Yeah, like, um, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. it's so great. Like once we get to that section, it's pretty early in the show. Like the entire oh, yeah. audience sings that show that song, and it's just. It's amazing. It's maybe like the second or third song of the, about the third song. Yeah, third or fourth song. Pretty, yeah, yeah. And that's when you see everybody get sucked yeah, right into the show. That's when we know we got them. Yeah. Yeah. If they sing that song, we got them. Uh, Derek, congratulations. Right, Such thanks, an incredible man. performance, a massive achievement Thank you. from you and everybody else involved, and uh, one of the best times I ha I've ever had at the theater. Wow, thanks for Really coming. great. Uh, the Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of the Temptations is on Broadway now at the Imperial Theater. Uh, Derek Baskin is incredible in it. Let's give him a huge round of applause for being here. Yeah.